One of the most inconsistent and yet most used blocks in dentistry is the inferior alveolar nerve block. In this video, we're going to give you some tips on how you can improve your chances for success the next time that you do this injection. First thing that we're going to look at is the location of the lingula. Now, the lingula is a bony projection on the medial surface of the ramus, and it's right over the opening of the mandibular foramen. So the mandibular foramen is where the inferior alveolar nerve enters the jawbone. And before this point, you can see if this stick represents the nerve, the nerve is basically out in the open. So when we look at this, what we know from this is we want to miss high and we want to miss posterior. We don't want to miss anterior and we don't want to miss inferior because if we do, the odds of getting anesthetic into this foramen are pretty slim. Gravity will pull the fluid away from this area. If you miss high, gravity is going to help for the anesthetic to percolate down into this foramen. What we do when we aim high, so usually what I'll say is instead of bisecting your thumbnail, maybe aim for the top of your thumbnail when the thumb is resting in the coronoid notch. This is true for all situations. Even in, say, class 3 patients who have a lower coronoid notch, you should be aiming higher on these patients anyways uh, because the lingula will actually be higher relative to the coronoid notch. So when you're injecting in anyone, I just say use the top of the thumbnail. That way we're safe. If you miss posteriorly, you're going to have a better chance of hitting some of the accessory nerves that are branching from the IAN that might give you better anesthesia. If you miss superiorly and you manage to sit your patient up for five to 10 minutes after your injection, you may actually salvage that block by allowing gravity to do the work and pull that anesthetic down into the foramen. The next tip that we can look at is that when you do a block, so let's say that we're blocking the right side, occasionally if you're trying to work on the central incisor or this lateral incisor, you may run into cross innervation, which means that sometimes there are nerves crossing over from the left side of the jaw into this region, and they're innervating the central or lateral incisor of the right side, even though you've already blocked this side. So what we do for that, how we take care of that, is basically to do a separate infiltration right at the apex of the tooth in question. Articane's a terrific anesthetic for this. That will knock out any cross innervation and help to get you through your procedure painlessly. The third thing to look at is when you have a panorex, so when you have a panoramic radiograph, sometimes you're going to see that there's not one canal, but there's actually two, or maybe even three. Now, three is very rare. You'll see doubles more than you'll see triples. So you'll see a bifid IAN canal that actually splits somewhere in the posterior region. Now, when you see that, another tip for those is you want to aim a little bit more posteriorly. And when you aim a little bit more posteriorly, and it's going to give you a better chance of hitting that nerve before it branches. So the branching can be difficult to locate on a pan in reference to your anatomy when you're injecting. So aiming posteriorly is just a safe way to go. Another issue with this block is that when we're over the premolars, which is what we're taught to do, is have the barrel of the syringe over the premolars, it doesn't necessarily guarantee that we're going to inject in the proper location. So we might actually inject too far anteriorly, and we'll know that because we'll be contacting bone far too shallow. If we inject too posteriorly, you should also know this because there might not be any bony contact, or you may be hitting bone, but you may be almost hubbing a long needle. Another tip that I can give you is to use basically a double dose of the anesthetic. So you can use this in cases where maybe someone has had trouble with anesthesia in the past, uh, or maybe if you're doing a surgical procedure. It's pretty standard for me to do two blocks when I'm taking out a molar tooth. Uh, just to ensure that the patient is good and numb. So increasing the volume of anesthetic is going to increase your chances of being successful. Another common cause for missing this injection is the sphenomandibular ligament, which connects to the lingula here. Now, if you don't hit bone when you're injecting, it's possible to be basically medial to this ligament. And if you deposit there, the ligament acts as a barrier for the anesthetic to kind of work its way laterally into the foramen. So that can be a reason that you miss your block if you're not contacting bone. So make sure that you're hitting bone at the appropriate depth. The other thing that I could say is that sometimes we get busy and we're in a hurry to get going. So we maybe don't wait long enough. If you give your blocks a little more time, and I know maybe five minutes is suggested to let them get working. If you give them maybe 10 to 15 minutes sometimes and you leave to go do some hygiene checks, come back, you will find that most times a block that you thought you might have missed is actually now sufficient to work on that patient. So these are some of the more common things that you might run into. 
and hopefully these are some tips that are going to get you out of a little bit of trouble maybe make you a little bit more successful with this block and make it a little more fun to do a little bit more predictable thanks for watching see you next time